Last time on the Strings of Fate podcast. I'm the Ferryman, and I would like to welcome you to my domain, the Tower of Masks. This tower is creation of my own mind. In it, over 120 different challenges. If you can face three of them and reach the top of the tower, you will find me. You guys, look at this. My mother's been here before. And two options appear next to buttons. The trial of burden or the trial of futility. Is there something that is a burden or something that is futile? I don't know. I feel like a button's easier to get through. Raise the boulder onto your shoulders and hold it for one minute every time the boulder is raised and held for that period of time. A torch will light. After all four torches have been lit, the elevator will unlock and your next two options will be presented. You all approach it, trying to position yourselves to somehow get this onto each of your shoulders. And at once, there is that flash of memories of your own, of the traumas you've endured. You feel the weight begin to increase, but then you begin to see the others, their memories. You feel their burden, and as it's shouldered onto you, the boulder gets lighter. Before you know it, you've held the boulder for four minutes, and the elevator opens. There is heavy stone burying itself into your weakening shoulders. But with all of you, the weight of it is bearable. And yet, sweat still pools, your legs still shake, and your heart still pounds. So when the weight is finally pulled off of your shoulders. It is done so gingerly, rising above you, that celestial form gently relieves itself off of your aching and weak bodies before resting in the divot gently. You are illuminated by torchlight, and the exhaustion of the task hits you all at once. Most of you can't help but collapse to your knees in a heap, shaking from the visions bored into your mind by the cruel and unusual mechanism set in place by your captor. And as you look into the eyes of your allies, the realization hits. Followed by a question. What did they see? And that question just brings more and more with it. How do they feel knowing what they know? How do you feel knowing what you know? 
How will they look at you? And how will you look at them? I'd like to kind of go around the table, and this is going to be a pretty emotionally heavy kind of segment, but if you could go through and just list glimpses that the other players and the NPCs would have seen. So I'll start with um, Ladar. They would see a flash of her father yelling at her mother. Um, A vision of her abandoning her sister. Kaol looking into her eyes and then stabbing her. A kiss shared with Esme and then leaving. And then just so many flashes of her killing people when she was really young. Chris, Vincent's glimpses, what were they? Well, you kind of hear more and see um, the unkind words of strangers. Um, Telling him that he is dirt. Um, That he's not worth anything. Um, You also hear Astera saying similar things. Um, you feel the cold of the amulet and like how terrifying that feeling is and the fear of losing control you see flashes of like dreams that he's had where he's hurt his friends the people he cares about um You also see the letters that Vincent got from what you think is his father and the the pain that it caused him. And you see a few flashes of holding, holding a knife with a shaking hand and like thinking of the worst possible thing you could do um you're fighting the urge to and that's that's what you see okay and finally moving around to Azram you see a kid that has been isolated by everyone without him knowing why you see a falling out with the only person he was close with you see Elliot get struck down feeling the warmth leave his body and then everything else you see is um through a tainted lens of drugs and alcohol and just shady encounters and a feeling of nothingness. And you see in the trials, Azurim make a choice choice that he wasn't happy with and that's what you see and so there's stunned silence in this chamber broken by the sound of the elevator doors just 
sitting there, waiting to take you on to the next level as Auna can't bring himself to look up and Dresden can't take his eyes off the door. The only sound in here now is just the burning of those braziers. So, uh, <clears throat> we should get going. <laughs> Next trial. We should probably talk about that. Maybe not now, but at some point. Let's move on. I don't know, just kind of looks up at all of you. His eyes resting on each of you and then sort of staying for a moment on Azram as you're getting up and making your way over to the elevator door. And he takes a breath in as if to say something and holds it in his lungs. Do I catch him I'm doing that? Do I notice it? Um, <clears throat> you can. What's your passive perception? Actually, I'll just say, it's probably too subtle to really guess. He wasn't really reaching out. It's just... <sighs> Opportunity he misses. He misses, basically. As Dresden stands and says... <sighs> we'll have time to unpack it. But... We succeeded. I guess it's just... A matter of pushing forward. Onward and upward, then. Lenore kind of gives Vincent and Azram kind of like a longer look. And then... can't meet anybody's eyes. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, anyway. <laughs> um, and then, all right. We, we can move on. Let's go. Yeah. You will make your way back into the elevator. You see the shattered statue standing next to it just motionless the shards all collected on the ground and singed by the chromatic eldritch blast from dresden you really did a number on that one you might want to save that for uh upstairs doesn't cost me anything as dresden makes his way inside turns waits for the rest of you Auna lags behind a bit as he just kind of slowly enters the elevator. You are all silent as the doors close behind you. You hear the the, the bubbling of the buttons on the elevator as the trials begin to change. And two more are presented to you. The trial of teeth or the trial of horns. 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 Sorry. Teeth. I don't like teeth. I don't like <laughs> no, teeth I like don't that. Okay. You are doing the trial of uh, horns? That's my vote. Okay. Dresden presses the button. And you begin to ascend. You can feel the, the lurch of your bodies moving upward. And it takes time, an uncomfortably long amount of time, as you all just stand, the only sounds being the whirring mechanisms or whatever is pulling this elevator, pulling you higher and higher and higher. There's no indication of when this elevator will stop as you just continue to rise. Saying anything? Doing anything? Just looking at the floor. We're like the longest, most awkward elevator ride right now. We're like, (laughs) 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 New Zach starts playing. (laughs) 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 The crawl funny video. (laughs) 
Mm. So I'm guessing we all saw what we saw. Yeah, I did. I didn't know you had a sister, Dresden. Dresden, who hasn't taken his eyes off the doors. I did. In a way, it was nice. I had begun to forget what she looked like. Begun to forget what all of them look like, honestly. So it's fresh now, but I suppose that I can say the same for the rest of you as well. Yeah, I have the same feeling. We're a lot more similar than I thought. Well, we're pretty similar, but. <sighs> I hope whoever this is realizes that this isn't going to. Deter me. There's that level head. <laughs> I'll hold on to it as best as I can, but I work best when driven by something like this. It's how I've operated for a long time. Are you all okay? I'm fine. I lived through it once. <laughs> it's interesting having it all at once. It's a lot. And knowing that now everyone else knows. I don't view you all any differently. I don't know if that's what you want to hear, but past is the past. Vincent, Justin sort of turns to look at you, who is, you've dodged kind of everyone's gaze. The past is the past. He gives you kind of a half-hearted smile. Well, I'm sort of still living and everything. So. It is an interesting note. I mean, this, if you kind of, the, the, there's an interesting point with Vincent's kind of glimpses in which everything that has kind of happened to Vincent in terms of the things he's done and the things that he hears has all been stuff that you just kind of see from the outside as just Vincent um, kind of struggling with something. There's never been like a physical indication that something is happening to him. Um, but what you felt and saw was very physical. It was audible. It wasn't a voice was a thought in Vincent's head. It was someone talking to him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a sudden lapse of judgment from Vincent. It was something mm -hmm. taking control. So there's a moment to just sit on that. Because there's a bit of a more understanding. Ding. The elevator doors open to the cheers of a crowd ringing out and dulling all other noises, just filling the space and the sound of horns and drums and light. You are not 
open to another chamber. You are open to a tunnel. At the end of that tunnel, you see, undeniably, sunlight. Dresden is the first one to step out of the elevator, just kind of keeping his posture up, um, turning his head slightly as he notices that standing there, another statue is placed perfectly intact. As he stops, you all exit the statue. Um, stays stoic, still behind the mask, before continuing. Welcome to the Trial of Horns. The task is simple. Tame the beast in the arena. You've arrived at a fortuitous time. Another competitor has faced this trial and seems to be in quite some difficulty. As the kind of looks down the tunnel, Anna too has been just slowly breathing in and out for just kind of his head up and gripping the quarter staff. What do you all do? Um, you said there's another competitor there, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Though she seems to be on her last leg, as it were. Shit. You, you guys, I think that's... That there's only... Well, we only know of one person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... can't I don't know what's gonna happen is this related to um I want to speak up what yeah Please. The, yes <sighs> well, I, I don't know what, what should I do what am I supposed to do <clears throat> Did you bring the bracelet? Yes. Mm. Might be a good time to put it on. He looks at Azurum and he's like, I- I'm afraid to. Well, it's either that or you might do something worse. Honestly, you might as well just try it. <sighs> You're right. There's nothing else we can do. It's not like we can go back and change it. I have to push forward. Vincent's in kind of a panic. <laughs> Anna uh, looks and kind of um, looks. Hey, Vincent. It's okay. If something happens, I will stop you. And. I will do so in a way hopefully that won't hurt you but I am confident focus on your breathing and we'll be okay okay right 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 okay you can trust us oh, right yeah okay okay yeah no it's fine sure Okay. He puts on a smile for you. Just kind of said. Thanks. What do you do? I'm going to keep the bracelet close at hand, but I'm not going to put it on quite yet. Okay. I don't think. You begin your travel down the tunnel then? Yeah. Stepping through the stonework, the sound of the crowd gets louder and louder, the sunlight gets brighter, and you can see that at the edge of the tunnel, 
just outside of the light, there is a figure that is slumped against the wall. Everyone make a perception check or a medicine check. Vincent stand far away. <laughs> a 14 for me. 14? Yeah. Okay. 23. 23? A 14. 23, 14. 14. 14. Ladara, you are the first oh to God. see just how bad of a state this person is. You've never met this person, but she is bleeding out. She is... Her breasts are rising her chest, and you can see that there is a huge <laughs> chunk out of her side that has been pushed through that has just been Ooh. gored. Ooh. And she's holding her wounds oh and just kind of... God. <sighs> oh, my God. You see her just kind of fumbling at her bag and pulling. Um, you can see that there are already like some kinds of first aid tools out on the ground that she is trying to apply first aid to herself and she's been trying, but it is a terrible, terrible process to do so as her hands are just bloody and her her body can't really take the pain. And... Um, as you are approaching, Vincent, you start to feel that sort of grip on your Fuck. heart, that kind of ice, big root, the kind that was just displayed to your friends as you are trying your best to focus on your breathing. And then you feel warmth. As you keep the bracelet close, there is something combating the cold in your hand. And you can feel yourself approaching the edge, but you feel it as if there is something stopping you. As you just feel your emotions welling up, but not overflowing. You all begin to approach as she looks up and says, Oh, please. I would um, try to get over to her as fast as possible and help her. And Azram, as you approach, you and Dresden yeah. <laughs> would recognize this person. Um, to describe her again, she is an older human woman with graying hair, fair skin with wrinkles, where she smiles. Um, she's dressed in, instead of robes this time, old adventuring clothes worn leather with runes inscribed into them atop these kind of flowy blue garments. Um, this is the headmaster of the Mages Academy in Lunastra and Elizabeth's mother, oh, Rosanov Singe. Shit. As you are approaching, what do you do? As she's... Oh, please, please help. Oh, shit. Does anyone... I'll no. try to... Yeah, I'm going to try to, like, help her with a first aid kit. Sure, go ahead and give a uh, medicine check. Uh, you can also use your familiar to give you advantage if you'd like. <gasps> yeah. You're kidding. Very nice. 17. 17 is enough to stabilize her as you are able to start to suture the wounds and bandage her up. It takes quite some time as she's there, but eventually her breathing steadies as she's... <gasps> Thank you so much. Thank you. And then uh, she looks up at all of you. Oh, we look like... Yeah, she's very confused, so she's just sort of... Thank you. I'm so sorry. Vincent's, like, a good, like, 15 feet back, and he's, like, gripping the, like, bracelet in his hands, and he's just, like, hands shaking, keeping his distance, eyes wide. Azurum's, like... Of course. <laughs> now why don't you tell me what's going on here? Ah, see? <laughs> you get a deception check. With an advantage. Because you'll be actor feet. feet. <laughs> okay. Jesus. I would just no, like to point out that when I have heard someone talk for at least a minute, I can copy their voice perfectly. So I sound so just like Geronimo. just like me who talk who like also, Geronimo. Yeah. Deception? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Go ahead and make a deception check with advantage. Trail. Are we keeping these disguises up? <laughs> For now, 
I don't know if you guys want to drop them. Can we? It, we can't. 21. 20. Shit. 21. Um, okay. She looks up a bit quizzically and says, uh, Who are you people? Uh, I, you're challengers, obviously, but, but why? I'm the people's champion. Geronimo <laughs> Johnson, and I'm here to beat the ferryman. <laughs> I think I heard that name when I was making my... Aren't you supposed to be racing or something along those lines? Do you want to ask questions or do you want to die yeah, here? Like, whoa, okay, whoa. okay, okay. <laughs> you're, you're right. I should be thanking you. All right, I'm, I'm not going to question your motives, but thank you for saving me. I... I hate to be a burden, but I... I can't fight. But I can't leave either. No burden to us. We've seen all the burdens we could possibly bear. <laughs> the word burden means almost nothing to me now. <laughs> yep, yep. Very true. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dresden's just... <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. What, what he said, yeah. Okay. So why don't you tell us what's going on? A bit of beast that needs to be tamed. It's, it's like, it's like a, a, a minotaur of some kind. Yeah, it's horrid, though. It's, it's a raving beast. Horns, axe, it's... I thought I could handle it on my own. But it's too strong. The goal is, from what I can tell, has to do with the chains around its neck. I don't know fully. I never got... I didn't get far enough. I... I messed up. And I ended up like this. (laughs) If it's alright, I would ask of your help to complete this. I can offer help of my own. But I can't go back in there by myself. Like a favor, forever, indebted to you, for each of us? I assume so. If that's what you need, I, I'll i do anything. Please. I... Sounds like a deal to me. I don't know if you know who I am, but I, I can do... When, when we Elizabeth go back Singe. to this... Correct. Who is that? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know my daughter's name. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Rosenopsin. Rosenopsin. Uh, Rosenopsin, is it? <laughs> so you do. Okay, I don't like to throw status around, but I have power. I have people that I can talk to to help you in any way if we make it out of this alive. Please. We will. So, all right. Thank well, we'll- you, promise. <laughs> She's kind of shaking and pale from the blood <laughs> loss. And she raises her pinky. Oh my god. Smiling. She's like, yes, we keep promise. Minotaur <laughs> looks at him and is like, let's go beat this Minotaur. And then he grabs the pinky real tight, like a, like a firm <laughs> oh, handshake. Ow, ow, okay, oh, yeah. Okay. Should I use the other arm? Right. Okay. <laughs> Good. So, any. Anything we should know about it? The beast itself, it reacts to sound. It's been blinded. I tried to sneak around it to try and get up, but it's very, very, very well hearing. As soon as it heard me, it was on me quickly. So we have to be quiet. Yes. I can do that. Did we get any sort of instruction from Mr. Man? All it was <laughs> to tame the beast. Okay. It was there. And there's a chain around it. Wh- uh, what, what, from what this person There's said. a chain around its neck. Okay. Where? So we can't see it, obviously, at this point. Where, where are we in, you in are, retrospect to this? Actually, you would probably be able to see it. You're in one of the tunnels that are kind of like oh, underneath okay. there, like underneath the sideline areas. Mm. You would see that in the center, like upon a throne, there is this enormous, like we were talking 12 feet tall minotaur with these jagged horns 
the scars over its eyes, and an enormous battle axe that just kind of sat there. Just like there are gold chains that are like kind of just like thick and heavy around its neck um, as it just kind of sits there in a wide stance, um, just resting its head. Um, and from this distance, you can also see that the body itself is not flesh. It looks very similar to the guardian of the tent that you had faced before. As you all are formulating your plan with Rosanov there, Vincent. He's kind of frozen. He's been frozen the whole time. You are kind of frozen in place, really staring at her on the ground as she's kind of smiling and just saying, like, I will rest here for a moment, but let me, allow me to just... Don't push yourself. It's okay. I have the energy to at least do this. Um, it's something I wasn't very much expecting. As you feel all of you, just like a, a magical force just kind of surround you for a moment. You all have been. Uh, you all have a resistance to fire damage. Oh, wow. for the rest of this trial. Cool. That's <clears throat> all I can do for now. But just give me a moment of rest, and I'll try and do more. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, shall we? As you just lean her head against the stonework and just kind of. Pass out for a moment. Oh God. <laughs> She's like, I'm good. Mm, yeah, and dies. <laughs> Which, for you, Vincent, is not. In this moment, in your mind, what would be racing is this. What's racing is this terrified fear as this person is completely exposed. Quite literally, their yeah. throat just like has leaned back, exposed to you. No sign of defending themselves already on death's door. And you are worried as to what might happen but what catches you off guard is that you are worried there are no other thoughts entering your head right now and there's no involuntary movement just the feeling of this misplaced anger and this worry but the cold has never the cold at this point has just not left anywhere but your heart The warmth rising from the hand that is closest to the bracelet has kind of kept it at bay. And if you approach any closer, you would find that it stays like that. So, it's up to you all. How are you approaching this challenge? Do I see anything about the... uh, the chains on the thing like do they look any sort of way besides like just a gold chain like sort of a key on them um there's no key on it that was hanging off uh you can see that they kind of the chains are kind of uh, looser in a way in some places um that they kind of just wrap around the neck you can't discern anything just from looking at it so far it just looks to be there's there's something is how many chains are um, it's there, there's too many, honestly, to count. There's there's just a couple that have been wrapped around there, um, and they look quite, you know, thick. Hot in there. Yeah, thick in terms of how they've been there. Hey everyone, it's Christian, and welcome to the break. I hope you're enjoying episode 57 of Softpot. It's been a while since we've done some combat around here. First of all, thank you for supporting us on Patreon. This is how I kind of want to start the break because. Patreon is a huge reason for how we can keep the show going as well as how we can keep improving the show. Um, All of us have jobs outside of SoftPod that we work to support ourselves, and uh, any money that goes to the show goes directly towards paying the uh, crew and the cast as well as to improving the equipment. We are also looking to eventually start renting a studio when the show can make enough money to do so, so any Patreon support really helps. You can go and see our tiers over at patreon.com slash the strings of fate. Right now I'm going to read out members of the $10 honorary bard tier. So thank you to Shecky Nestor, Bran, Tegan, Morgan, Remy, Emily W, Devin Morrissey, and Essek. 
Thank you so much for all your support. It really means a lot. <gasps> Look how calmly he speaks of the holy patrons. <clears throat> uh, moving on. We also want to say a big thank you to Roll20. He speaks of the virtual tabletop. Mm -hmm, that's right. We are a Roll20 ambassador. So go ahead and check out their website over at Roll20.net for a great virtual tabletop service that you can use to play your games from anywhere in the world. Thank you, Roll20. And finally, I'd like to announce that we are hosting another Dungeon Depths. Good lord, he can actually say it. Mm -hmm, yep, Dungeon Depths giveaway. You can check ours and their social media for the details. If you don't already know about Dungeon Depths, really, every time? Dungeon Depths is your one-stop shop for quality gaming supplies with character. That's dice, dice trays, apparel, stickers, and soft pod merch. There's so much over at shopdungeondepths.com, and you can get your order 10% off if you use the code softpod at checkout. That's S-O-F-P-O-D. Was not expecting that. Anyways, thank you, Dungeon Depths, for being a longtime supporter of the show. Finally, a quick shout out to the Softboard. Thanks for watching live and thanks for communicating in our community Discord server. It really means a lot and it really is a joy to watch everyone talk about the show and theorize and talk about their favorite characters. It's very, very fun. Enough. I have heard enough. How is it that you, an outsider, can say the name of an old god with seemingly no reproach? Cushion. Even uttering the URL in the last break took decades off of my life. Decades? What? That is not good. If this is what an advertisement rate is, I do this pretty much every week, unless, you know, someone else is doing this on my team. You must only have minutes to live. What? What are you? No, I, I feel perfectly healthy. I mean, there has been like a weird ache in my back, but I don't think that's from saying dungeon depths. Enough. Your execution has been suspended. Scholars, prepare the basic scriptures. It is with grave importance that I recommend this course of action. We must learn the outsider of our ways. I actually kind of just want to go home. I'm very tired and unfortunately, should you refuse, there may not be a home for you to return to. <sighs> okay. At this point, why not? Show me the way. This cannot be. The sponsored sage would give our secrets to an outsider. Preposterous. Even his head is strange and without a fungal cap. It seems I must call upon. The Inquisitors. So, first off, let's go ahead and start this off with this. Why don't everyone, why don't everyone go ahead and give me a, an initiative roll? Ooh. In fact, I'm going to take a moment to put down all the figures that we're going to need for this. And then you all tell me what you get. 19. 19. 17. 17. Michelle's like 27. <laughs> A million. Twenty-five. <laughs> okay, so start of the round <laughs> at the top of the round here, Ladara. That is you. What is your Sorry, first? They're move? fighting oh, they're with the mini figures. Making the figurines kiss. <laughs> Who are you making oh. kiss? I made Dresden and Aona kiss. And then Ladara was like, "Whoa." 
Aww. Yeah, each square is five feet. So, so anyway. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> so He's like, anyway. So like, square, yeah. Yeah. Five put... feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which way? Swing down. <laughs> okay. So, um, maybe a little bit smaller than usual, but that's okay. So, each square is five feet. We're just going to try to approximate as best as we can. Um, Ladara. You're at the top of the round. What is your move as you see the Minotaur sitting there? She is going to try and sneak as close as possible to it. Go ahead and, and, it. Okay, and then try and grapple it with vines. Ooh, interesting. Okay, first the stealth yeah. roll. 22. 22. Okay, interesting enough for this first round as you are able to sneak your way up to the minotaur you are now going to go ahead and make a grab we'll make an augment check sure How close be, do I get? you're able to get right up on upon the minotaur you can see that from the throne it is enormous it nearly blocks out the sun as you are just like kind of under it at this point trying to sneak around it it is this enormous behemoth of a creature and around you there are these multi-tiered stands that move around this sort of coliseum um, that are cheering out, and they are filled with masked puppets that are all cheering Ooh. and raising out this That's so creepy. manipulated cry. And a blue sky, believe it or not, with the sun down on top of you. This is no chamber at all. But I was like, I'm just going to walk right up to it. <laughs> and you're going to make an augment check okay. with advantage because you snuck up on it. Okay. Whew. So... Good. So I'm going to get a way to get out of there. Okay. Mm. 16. Just beat it. <gasps> As you <gasps> quickly just <laughs> throw vines around the creature, it roars out this. <laughs> As it as it is suddenly like held by the vines, it is caught off guard and is trying to break through. You can see its muscles just like bulging as it's She's trying try to, to be held. I don't know, I guess concentrate to keep it like held as long as possible. Okay. This creature, I will say, um, is currently grappled. So there's movement speed of zero. Um, Little is like, okay, who's next? <laughs> Legendary action oh, after oh, cool. your turn. <laughs> oh, no. It's gonna kill me. The creature I about this whole legendary turns. Thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> the creature turns. Um, so that's grappled <laughs> really with its battle axe and <gasps> swings out towards you. No. Um, it's just grappled, so it doesn't get disadvantage on this one. That is twenty-eight to hit. Oh my god. <laughs> that's a joke, right? Yeah, it definitely hits. <laughs> That is, in fact, the. That is, that's, in fact, it. That's it. That's it. It's that not is, a in joke. fact, what it rolls. Um, you take 15 points of slashing damage plus. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. um, 12 have to 6 points of fire damage as the axe Ooh. rushes across your armor. You can feel it slice into you a bit god. and it leaves this. <laughs> Sear as there is this flaming metal that just lies off the side oh as its God. face turns towards you with the vines. Um, that is its legendary action. That goes to Vincent Ubra. Vincent, as you are making your way out of the tunnel, keeping an eye on Rosanov and keeping yourself in check, you all suddenly hear out a, this pain slash as you look and see Ladara holding the creature with vines and it turning to slice down her again. Oh shit. Um can I do another one of my fun little uh, special banes on it? Uh you can certainly try. I yes. can try. Okay. What's the uh charisma check? Is charisma 17 yes. to beat? Charisma save. Um, it's not going to have to use its save, uh, its legendary save, because it rolls a twenty. So, but the way that we have it homebrewed, which we haven't had time to actually tell you about, because we haven't fought that much, is you don't lose the spell. So, okay. if you want, you can't you just can't try another spell on it like that. Okay. Again. Then so you don't lose your bane. 
it. Resist it. Dang it. Um. Uh, you have a bonus action. You could give inspiration if you'd like. I can't tell how far I can get. Can I get 30 feet into a, a different, like, uh, corridor? So it, like, I'll say edge, that wherever there are stairs, there are corridors. So that's, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm going to go ahead and use Misty Step. You are in a, another corridor. Which one would you like to be at if you can get, like, I'd say you can probably get to, like, on the right side of it there or on the left side of it as far as you can go. Um, Not that will, far, but, like, at the halfway point. I will go to the left, and yeah. I will poke my head out and give a little wave to my friend so they know where I am. Okay, you... Wave out. Vincent Misty steps off to the side. Ladara is holding this piece with as much magical power as she can muster using the teachings that you've learned from Granny over your uh, week of training or so. Um, that brings us then to Azram. What is your move? Um, Azram, from where he's at, is going to try to cast uh, Elemental Bane. Hey, yo. Elemental Bane. Okay. What's the what's the save? Uh constitution my spell save is like 18 or something. Um it's gonna have to burn through one of its legendary re- uh, resistances. Um it burns through its legendary resistance um and saves against the spell. How about that one? That sucks, dude. That sucks, dude. I'm sorry to say that. Um, legendary resistances, the spell slot does not go back to you. Damn. Because it's a big thing to burn through a legendary resistance. Shit. Any bonus action? Um, as a bonus action, can I cast Hexblade's Curse at it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Hexblade's Curse, I think it just takes root, right? There's yeah. no spell save. A shock of lightning just wraps around the uh, Minotaur as it just is surrounded by lightning and thorns. Just... <laughs> Um, going to use another legendary action oh. to go ahead and give me a um, dexterity or strength saving throw, please. Okay. Cool. Fourteen. Does not save. Damn. You are knocked prone as you fall over as the creature raises one hoof and slams it into the ground, causing a thunderous shockwave from around you. You lose your footing, still holding on to the thorns. You hit the ground um, and are knocked prone. The creature, when you are in this state without footing, is not considered grapple, but you are considered attached to this creature currently. (laughs) Um, And we'll see how that happens in just a little bit. Um, Because it's the creature's turn. Awesome. Um, so some of these spells do cost some kind of component. You see the creature just like kind of screech out this like, and then just start charging, dragging Ladara with the vines across the sand and rock as it is charging towards, um, uh, just charging like a circle around, um, this area. Um, Drag the hell. It is simply, if you could just move it in a random direction with Ladara. Um, yeah, drags drags her to this side of the corner. And then in this sort of frenzy, uh, makes a reckless attack um, on Ladara. Who's, oh, I guess wouldn't need to make a reckless attack because you're already prone. If I hit. Just hit me. Just, 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 do, just it. do it. Just do your damage. You tried what to bane this bitch twice. Mm-hmm. Just do it. All my bitches are watching me get dragged. We tried. 23 points of damage. How you doing? How you feeling? Looking pretty bad. This creature has an ability. Oh, God. Called Execute. (laughs) (laughs) If the target is prone, it deals max damage. Oh, my God. Plus the fire damage. You take 33 slashing damage. Uh, We're going to rise. It's going to be... Oh, well, at least there's still <laughs> four of you that are like alive and well. Yeah, so sorry, it's not, okay. It's just I'm me. My ass it's just Ladara. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not 33. 31 points oh, okay. of slashing damage plus fire damage, which is 2d8, which is five points of fire damage. 
So 36 in total points of fire damage. What you get? You, uh, of damage as the creature turns to you who is prone and tries to bury its ax into your shoulder. Um, the way that hit points work in D&D, it's kind of hard to describe. They're more like how far, how much you can push your luck before you, something finally gets you. You barely ha- you can barely dodge out of the way and you feel your life force just yeah, I'm not if sure that had hit, it would not have been good. So you were able to dodge out of the way, but that's kind of how I extrapolate damage, is that it's not all you're getting chopped to death. Because <laughs> it just doesn't really make sense to take an axe like that. But yeah. You, yeah. Anyways. What you at? 16. Oh my fucking Ladara god. Ladara is really, not really great. down there. <clears throat> um, that brings it. us to Auna's turn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Auna, <laughs> everyone is being quiet and trying to figure out a way to do this, and Auna <laughs> sees this happen, um, and without saying anything, just dashes out onto the field and starts running at the creature. Auna has a speed of 50 feet, so if you could put him like 5, 10, I think it's 10 squares, as close to the creature as possible. Uh, I think it's a little so squares, squares, honestly, but he's going to bonus action step of the wind and go 50 more feet. He's going to leap in... Be- I'm, I'm going to s- extrapolate here. He's going to leap in between Ladara and the Minotaur, and he is going to use um, Fist of Four Thunders as he charges up a punch and <laughs> wiggles back a Oof. punch that just hits the air around the creature, um, which is going to make a save. Fails the save. It's not worth it for him to burn a legendary resistance on this one. Um, creature takes 12 points of damage um, and is pushed back 15 feet. Alana is just like the wind, just in between the Minotaur and Ladara, and just like <laughs> there's a shock of air that just throws it back and it slams against the wall. Um, as it pushes away, as Auna is standing over Ladara. Um, is, are you okay? Uh, yeah. <sighs> I'm peachy. Reacts to sound, right? Yeah. <sighs> over here! As oh it sort God. of yells Did out. Um, well, the creature just kind of... <laughs> um, however, so at Auna... Uh, Auna is going... Uh, I think this is the last. Nope, technically I can't do it unless it's after a player's turn. And Ona is an NPC. Okay, no legendary actions. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Dresden's turn. <laughs> Dresden. Oh my um, god. Dresden. Dresden looks. Dresden looks at you. Asher was like, "What the fuck is he?" <laughs> As he goes out and he's like, "Okay," and makes his way over to. Well, he's gonna help. I have. Dresden runs out into the field, dirt and sand getting kicked up behind him. He's not as fast as Auna, but he still makes it as he scoops up um, Ladara and casts Misty Step, which is a bonus action, into where Vincent is in the corridor. He leaves Ladara with you, saying, look after her, just a bit. Go uh, help Auna, please. He took her her best, and just whoosh, um, whips an Eldritch Blast out at the Minotaur. Yeah, let's go. Um, he actually has a few now. Let's go. Doesn't hit. Hits. Hits. 2d12. 10. 20 points of damage to the Minotaur Ooh. as it is blasted in the side um, from the direction of Vincent uh, and Ladara. Uh, so far, we've got some good damage on the board, but the Minotaur is still looking pretty good, uh, unfortunately. <clears throat> Back at the top of the round, that's you, Ladara. You've taken a chunk out of yourself. Okay, give me up. Okay, come on, good. Come on. I okay, up for up. <laughs> All right. Make a perception check. Uh, this is like retroactive, Ladara. While you were like being pulled around, what you could see. Eighteen. Eighteen. You could see that there is like a main sort of stage area that's there, like a, a seated area where there are puppets that are dressed kind of to look like more regal, almost like an emperor of some kind. And they're just, you know, being acted out as puppets. They've got puppet grapes that they're pretending to eat and things like that. But in front of that, 
that seating area, there are three creatures. What? That are on that. Oh my god. So, you don't know what that means, but it means something. So, that's what you have. Continue with your turn, please. If I use Splinter Shot, will I hit Almond? You can aim it. I would probably say with an open air arena, you could probably aim it so oh. it wouldn't hit Almond. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to do Splinter Shot. Sure. Go ahead and fire Splinter Shot. Go ahead. It's actually a deck save on this thing's part. Natural one, and it's not worth it to burn a legendary resistance. It's just going to take the full damage. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and should. roll, uh, what is it? 3d8 plus your um, sneak attack damage, because how is here? 13 from me. 13 plus your sneak attack, which is how many dice now? 66. Go ahead and roll 66. Total 42. 42 yeah. points of damage. The You load three arrows into the bow and you just... They smash into the sand and just explode up in a flurry of thorny arrows that just collide into the chest as the mentor... It takes those hits real hard. 42 points of damage is nothing to sneeze at. Um, any bonus action or movement? They put. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna ready, steady, aim for next. Ready, steady, aim. Okay, sure. Self advantage for the next turn. Vincent, that's you. Um, I'm gonna very quickly heal Ladara. Cure nice. wounds at a oh, third level. Oh, oh, very nice. Thirteen points of healing. Okay. Actually, wait, no, thirteen plus five. 18. 18 points of healing. Ooh. 18 points of healing. Um, um, so I heal you, and I get you up, and I'm like, don't do that again. <laughs> My heart rate's already a little too high. My blood pressure's a little bit. I just thought that. I, yeah, yeah, I won't. Okay. I won't. I All right. Won't okay. I think, I'll just stay here. Well, these aren't straightforward. Right? These trials yeah. aren't straightforward. There has to be some catch to it. There, there's there's gotta be something that we're missing. This it's not just fighting. Weird puppets. And then look at look, do you see those three torches? We have to probably light them. Okay. Or so maybe that's and something about the chains around his neck? Probably. Um Get the chains off! <laughs> get, hey, get the chains off! <laughs> get those chains, Hallelujah! Get those chains off! <laughs> get those the chains off! The Lord has arisen indeed! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Happy Money Easter! <laughs> <laughs> there are no chains on me. Okay, so let us continue. Um, okay, I'm okay. so so yeah. for my that was my action to heal you, and then as either a bonus action or something, can I just like perceive? Can I just perceive? try to sure. put some shit together? Put some shit together, sure. Make it like an Arcana intelligence intelligence check. Together. Together. <laughs> a shit to give together. Shit together, together roll. roll. Yeah. Um. Okay, that was a twelve plus nine. We should twelve plus nine. Okay. Put <laughs> your shit together, roll. Okay. Just compress it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 21. 21 on this roll. We're trying to put it together. The wording of the puzzle is that we need to tame this beast somehow. Mm -hmm. Taking a look at the chains on its back, there doesn't seem to be that much room for like a keyhole, and there doesn't seem mm -hmm. also to be that much area anywhere that it looks like it would be unlocked. So it's either you'd have to unravel it, which seems kind of difficult, Mm -hmm. You get kind of an angle on it as it's kind of like squared up to face Alana. They kind of look like brains. Mm. Okay, so I will I will relay that information, and I will mm -hmm. say there's there's something up to some to it. We need to get on it. I'm like, which one of us is the fucking is is the craziest person? I feel like Asher was probably already thinking about it. Probably. Asher's like vibrating, ready to run out there. As, like, give me like, give me as my very last thing in my turn, can I like look down at Asher and do a little like <laughs> whip the chin? Oh, like ride him, cowboy. Okay. Sorry, okay. Okay. Because 
Holy, <laughs> he's beeped. Everyone's just gonna be like, All what right. did she say? So I will try to get that to you, Azrim. I don't know if you're gonna take that uh, the right way. You see, Vincent, I'm, I like point at the Minotaur and I point at the back and then I like do the little whip motion and I'm like, get on it. <laughs> 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 okay. But without saying it. Okay. You can cut my get the chains out. Get the, yeah, get no, the you chain. Can, I'm keep it in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can't even cut any of this shit out. Y'all are being so exposed. Funny. Say hi to All the right. chat. God All damn right, it. get the chains out. All right, so back in it. Um, legendary action uh, from this creature. This creature is confused because it heard Aona yell out, and then it felt damage from that direction. Can't fully see Aona. Um, it's going to try and gore Aona by kind of ducking its head down low and then charging at Auna. Auna is going to make a deck save to kind of jump out of the yeah, way or take a lot of away. fucking damage. I swear you to God, if it. you get imperiled, I'm yeah. gonna beat Fif- your ass. 15 is not enough. Um, Auna um, is trying to find a way to dodge out of the way and you see him kind of like dash through the sand but the creature is too large and too fast, just as Rosenov was saying, as the creature is already corrected. You see it just turn, and you see one of the horns just like, pierce oh, down. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. At least 25 points of damage. Um, as Aona is um, knocked upward and then just falls to the ground. He lands as best as he can, but you can see that there's blood leaking from his side as he takes a good amount of damage from the gore. Um, no, actually, he's got to make a roll to see if he is knocked prone. He's knocked prone. So oh go my ahead, god. Anna is prone on the ground. Um, he lands as he's kind of writhing. He's like, Ugh, uh, uh, uh. Go! Just um, get away from it! <laughs> that's Alana's, uh That's the legendary action. That's Azram. It's your turn. Azram wants to cast his astral hook and Tarzan over and try to land directly on its back. You see a tear in space as a hook just dangles out. Uh, Aona uh, is on the ground sort of looking up as Azram, you whip outward. The whip extends 60 feet, wraps around the hook, and just launches Azram above the creature. You land on its back. Um, Go ahead and make a strength check. This is a a DC rather than against uh, his... DC his strength check because he has very strong. You're trying to grapple the chains. You get? Can I give him the advantage? <laughs> Can if I you will leave you your cat point, over right? there. <laughs> uh, you have a luck point, right? Oh, that's oh, way, way before. Yeah. Yeah. There, listeners, it's pre podcast lore. We have a set. Uh, Vincent has the lucky feet, but he only gets two lucky rolls a day mm-hmm. because he permanently gave one up to wow. Azrael. He's very unlucky friend. He's very <laughs> That's true. unlucky wow. friend. There is a rule that I've had since pre-podcast that if Vincent gives up all of his lucky feet, then he will become unlucky. <laughs> which we will see what that means. Yeah, he already kind of is, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, it can only... <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, it can only go downhill from here. Yeah. Anyway, so Azrael, are you going to... I'm going to re-roll. Go ahead yeah. and re-roll. re-roll. That was okay. better, I guess. Um, not much, though. Uh, 13. 13 is enough to grab onto the chains. you kind of in a rickety right. position as you're holding on to them as best as you can. You're not sure at best how this is going to work out for you. Um, so you have disadvantages to holding on to the chains until you can kind of readjust your grip. But you're holding on to the chains. Do I still have an action? Yeah, because Astral is your bonus action, right? Yeah. Yep. Can I... I guess, like, while I'm, like, wringing its neck a little bit, can I just cast three bolts of Elder's Blast into it? <laughs> to the back of its head? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and make your rolls. <laughs> First one's a 24 to hit. 24 hits. 18 to hit. 18 hits. 14 to hit. 14 doesn't hit. 2d12, then. D10. Plus. Oh, oh, it's d10. Okay, so. No, you didn't have to say that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they uh, do all 2D10, that. 2d10, that's a <laughs> 10 plus 10 plus 
24. 24 points of damage. 24 points of damage. Wow. Come on. Is it each time you deal damage, it does an additional four? Yeah. So it's 28, 28 damage. Well, no, it's because, oh, you're right. You're so right. 28, thanks. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> 28 points of damage as Asrim, you are holding onto the chains and you just, uh, you just start blasting Eldritch force into the neck of this piece of its um, the third one just gets deflected off a chain um, you do a good amount of damage on its turn with you on its back it's going to use its bonus action to try and uh, buck you off good fucking luck dude What? make a fuck? strength check for me you can do it or strength saving throw or dexterity saving throw whatever's high Strength saving throw or deck saving throw or strength throw? Actually, it's more like endurance. So I think it's actually, no, strength saving throw or con- constitution saving throw. Strength or constitution saving yep. throw. What did you get? Strength or constitution, not a charisma save. Not, really. not a charisma save. <laughs> <laughs> like, not like charisma. Right? Sure, I can't like do sure? charisma for that. Not, not like a wisdom <laughs> save either, right? Not a wisdom save. Okay, a constitution save is going to be 14. 14. Um, you lose your grip on the back as you start to tumble off, um, and you sort of hit the ground behind it, um, make a deck save to see how you land. Nine. You land prone. <laughs> oh, oh, cool. Now you're both fucking prone. What does that mean uh, exactly? Heads or tails? A heads. Okay, go ahead and flip the coin. I don't know what it is. Jesus tails. <gasps> <laughs> the way that landed. Oh my gosh. That's heads. Uh, the creature whips around quickly and you just execute to bury its axe down towards you. You take 33 points. Uh, you didn't even slash. roll anything. It's because it does max damage. And that's what I was saying is earlier I was thinking it was a different thing. Oh wait, no, you're right. It's, it, it is different. It's supposed to be more damage. <laughs> oh my god. Hit me with it. Oh. Oh no, no, sorry, half. Half. So it's actually 44 points of damage as the axe Ooh. lands very close to you, cutting into your side a bit as you're trying to roll out of the way. That's its turn. Um that is going to bring us to Auna, who kind of sees what you were doing. Um as it's turned, it's back. Auna uses half his speed to get up. And then the other half of speed to run up the back of the Minotaur yeah. and try and wrench it back from his brother. Let's As go! He, says, and he tries to pull backwards. It's make a strength check for Auna. Actually, not bad. Auna has got a pretty firm grip. He's got these two huge chains in his arms. These two huge chains. These two arms. That's what I thought you were going to say. These two biceps that are just rippling. His muscles are rippling. He's pulling back on this creature as he is holding on. That is going to be, um, I think, honestly. I just sweat dripping off Alan. <laughs> you can see it glistening. He's his like hair is sticking out, to his though. forehead. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my this picture you're painting. <laughs> oh my goodness Alan gracious. Not, Someone shouldn't draw that, that right? No one, no no one, one should, should draw ever that. draw that. Please, god. Please don't draw Alan. Please okay. don't draw Alana sh- on top of a Minotaur choke slamming it <laughs> with his big beefy arms. Sweating. I'm just gonna use that. A- I'm just use his action for this. Then <laughs> he's gonna continue as Dresden moves on. You see Dresden dash out into the sand, get in the middle, get into a good position where he's not going to hit Alana. And then um, from his hand, you see scales ripple up his arm into his hand into these sharp claws as he (laughs) fires this chromatic lightning that pierces the side of the minotaur. He's going to do a dex save. Um, He's going to make a legendary reaction to save, so he takes half of it, and even half is going to be uh, 20 points of damage. 20 points of lightning damage as the minotaur is (laughs) electrocuted by a lightning bolt. Back at the top of the round, that's Lidara, that's you. What's your move as... Oh, wait, no. Sorry. Oh, my God. As the round ends... What are we doing? As Auna is holding on to the chains, she hasn't noticed, but you, Ladara, see behind him one of the braziers just light up as he's holding on. I'm going to be like, keep holding on. Because you're going to make I'm trying. You're doing great. (laughs) Okay, that's Ladara. That's you. 
Okay. Um, I'm gonna shoot a poison arrow at it. You're gonna shoot a poison arrow at it, sure. Go yeah, for using it. steady aim. Go ahead and make it with advantage. <laughs> and rob sneak attack. If it hits. 17. 17. just hits. Go ahead and roll 2d10 plus 60 cents. Plus. 4? Yeah. Yeah, plus 4. Come on, dice. Come on, dice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Thirty-four. Plus nine. Plus four. Plus four. So thirty-eight points of 38. damage. The creature is struck by the arrow. You can feel the. It can feel the poison coursing through its body as it's just kind of groaning there. As Auna is still holding on to it. Um, it's going to use a legendary action to use one of its rechargeable abilities. How many abilities. of those does it have? Every time, <laughs> it gets, every time it gets back to its turn, it regains all three. Holy shit. Every time it gets back to its turn. It can only use them after your turn. I'm going to need a long rest after this. <sighs> well, <laughs> we'll see. Um, <laughs> everyone. So rough. Everyone. Go ahead and make a constitution save. What? I got a 13. <laughs> 13? Mm-hmm. 11. 11? What'd you get? Two. Oh, fun. Two, 13. 11. What's everyone's health at? I'm full health, I think. You're full health? Thank God. 34. 34? 74. 74? What's your full health? 83. Give it to me. Ladara goes unconscious as all of you who failed take 47 points of damage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> From the screech that this creature lets out, this bellowing just... <laughs> it pierces oh, your eardrums and you feel it as if it's knocking at your skull. It is a rechargeable action. It doesn't get that back unless it can roll a certain thing on its turn. But... Ladara, you are unconscious. Now I have to roll for the other two to see what they take. Um, first things first. Dresden. Fails. Takes 37 <laughs> points of damage as he covers his ears and nearly falls to his knees. Now in a... Succeeds as <gasps> he holds one. on despite the noise. He takes half of that damage wow. at 23. Woo. Okay. Tough. Vincent, that's you. Ladara goes unconscious oh as you God. see her just cover her ears and then her eyes just roll back in her head. She Holy shit. Her. Um, so healing potions are if I give it to somebody else and I use a bonus action, I roll for it, right? Yep. If you give it to someone else and you don't and you use a full action, I'll give them full health. I'm going to drag your body back a little bit <laughs> and I'm going to use a potion on you. I'm going to use it as a bonus action just to get you up. And I will also just like give you one when you do wake up. Um, and then as my action, I'm going to try to use Phantasmal Force. Sure. What's uh, That's an intelligence save, correct? Yeah, it is a save. Alright, let me roll the intelligence save. Is a healing potion 1d4? 2d4. 2d4. Plus 2. Plus what? Plus 2. Uh, failed the intelligence save. I don't think I'm gonna use a. I need to save my last legendary resistance for a big hit. So what does it see? So it feels uh, chains wrap around its arms and its legs and pull it down onto the ground. You see suddenly as Vincent, as you uh, whisper out these words to this creature, um, you see suddenly the creature's arms just kind of get pulled apart and then. Um, just flat, fall to flat. it. Yeah, just fall down flat um, as if it's being held. You see his arms shaking, and just kind of like, <clears throat> as Auna is holding on to the chains. Um, the creature is restrained um, as it would be. It's restrained and currently prone um, as it is being held in a prison of its own. And yeah. Ladar pops up at seven hit points Ooh, with hit a points. another full bottle of healing potion in her hands. Red. Chug it. <laughs> Chug it. Chug it. Okay, like, sure. On the ground, just like. Boop, 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 boop. 
uh, creature is on the ground, so we can't really use its legendary a- actions. So that brings us to Azrum. Azrum is on the ground, right? Azrum is, uh, Azrum is prone on the ground. You see the creature fall to the ground with Awana on top of it. What are you doing? Azrum's going to cast three bolts of Eldritch Blast at it. Go for it. 28 to hit. Hey, yo. Hits. 21. 22. 28. Uh, all of those hit. Yeah. Go ahead and roll 3d10. Let's go. Plus your Hexblade's Curse, plus your regular whatever is the thing. Um, 12 plus 15, which is 27, plus... 12 again, which is 39 points of damage. Um, this creature goes below zero health as you <laughs> smash into the puppet and you see it just kind of deactivate. But you can see there is a growing flame in its eyes uh-huh. as the as it comes to its next turn, it doesn't act as it is in anger. It moves through Alana holds the chains, now just holding on to them. Dresden um, just gets to a better position around it, trying to get further enough so that he can still hit it. And as the round ends, you see a <laughs> another brazier go up. Yeah! This creature is not going to act until its next turn when it comes back up at 1 HP, which is the catch, is that you can't kill this creature. Yeah, okay. You okay. have to tame it. So you three have your turns to prepare for when this creature comes back up. Um, sorry, not at one HP. It's going to come back up to its its full health, but that's because Damn. so you can't just knock it back down yeah, as soon as it comes back up. Basically, um, actually, I'll, I'll 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 change the rules a little bit. No, I won't. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Anyways, Whatever you think. So you all can prepare actions, attacks, etc. Whatever you need to do, but Alana needs to last one more round on the back of this. We can play this out a little less like D and D combat and just kind of speed through this mm. as the creature is gaining its. Who's really hurt other than Ladara? Are the people in the center really hurt? Are anybody? Azrum's at like twenty-seven. Dresden's below great. half. Um, Dresden's at thirty-one, but Alana is still doing pretty good at sixty-three. Okay, I'm going to use Mass Healing Word mm-hmm. at a fourth level for everybody as uh, you know, an action, I mm-hmm. guess. And then my bonus action is just going to be to yell at Auna and give him some bardic inspiration. Okay. Be like, remember, you got something to live for! Auna <laughs> oh. <laughs> takes deep breaths as he holds on to the chains. He looks around at all of you as he grips them tightly. Um, oh, I love him. 12 points of healing for everyone. Uh-huh. 12 points of healing for everyone. Every Fantastic. single person. Including me. <laughs> oh, wait. That is a bonus action. Can I use it as an action? You can make an augment roll, sure. Okay. It's not a large one to kind of change to be more. What'd you get? 11. 10 is the DC. Because okay. you're, okay. you're technically making it technically worse, quote-unquote, but yeah. making it cost more. So, yeah, that works. You augment mass healing word. You heal your friends and inspire Auna as he is getting ready to hold on. Anyone else doing anything? Or are we skipping to when this thing wakes up? I'm going to ready steady aim, I guess, it's once again. Uh, well, she's, like, hobbling and getting up. <laughs> like, okay. I like... Prepare right. yourself. <laughs> At the top We've of got one more turn, one more. Yeah. I need to roll a d6. If you could, if anyone could please hand me one. Let me just ch- chuck it at you. Ooh. This guy. Do that. Five or six. This roar comes back up. Uh, oh, fuck you. Cool. That's a mm. six, so. You didn't even roll that. You just fucking threw it on the table. Yeah, he clonked it. He clonked it. was barely a clonker. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> clonker. Bonus action, he's going to try and buck Alana off. No. Strength check. No. Go ahead and roll your inspiration dice. I get to roll it? Yep, you get to roll it because uh, I want some agency in this. I'm really scared. I'm <laughs> you have, it's not an immediate success. Please. Ten. Full ten? Full ten. Holy shit. What is this? I feel Alan triumphant. <laughs> This is... Um, Thank God. Okay. 
Rona is going to try to use Strength of Blood. It needs to be 27. Yes, this creature will natural 20. Oh my god. <gasps> Let's see this. What is, what's his modifier? His modifier is plus 5, so he's, he has a plus 15 right now. Oh, okay. He's a 12 or higher. Come on. <gasps> 31. <laughs> yeah! As the creature rises, getting ready to fuck Alana off and bellow out a, a roar of thunder. Wait, no, I can't do the roar of thunder on its turn. I have to do it after one of... I can't... I know I can't do it because it's a legendary action, so I can't do it unless it's after one of your yeah, turns. Yeah, 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 which yeah. means that if Alana had fallen off, you would have taken another 12d6 damage. Oh. Which means as Alana holds on to this creature who is getting ready to charge and roar out, you can you can feel it slipping as the creature literally... You can see the, the puppet body just sort of like grow stronger and try to force Alana off. You violently... See him violently thrown backwards you see him as he's thrown up in the air to steal himself and then swing downward and kick into the back of the creature bending it back forward just wrench oh the chains back just hog tying this minotaur cowboy um, Alana let's go he feels bardic inspiration yeah. from Vincent as he has something he cannot die here for yeah. he pulls the back on the creature um, that is Buried of Wing. Very, very good. Okay, so. <laughs> as wow. Alana holds on to the creature, the creature is prone, restrained. Um, I'm going to see if it can get an attack on him. It still believes it's chained. That's why it's got disadvantage on okay. the attack. Okay, uh, it's, it's restrained. Right. My bad. Uh, and because of that, it doesn't hit. Oh. <laughs> as the rest of the round passes in the third major, the lights, oh, the crowd God. roars in a cheer as oh, Alana is. <sighs> as tightly as he can onto these chains, the creature goes to rest as the puppet deactivates. The strings are just cut as the creature falls unconscious. The crowd oh cheers. God. Even the emperor puppet It's a little bit of a clap as you see further down the tunnel, the elevator door is just Stands out of breath. <sighs> Looks over at you and just reaches out his hand to you. That's my brother. And Azram slaps his hand and gets up. He pulls you on top of the Minotaur and raises a cheer. Minotaur's oh. like Vincent's in the corner, <laughs> like yeah. Minotaur's <laughs> like on the ground halfway. She's like. <laughs> Off of the side, you can see with a tear in her eye, there was no cinch. Thank God. We did it. And that's where we went. We did it! Yay!